So our second video about sucking this week, we're gonna talk about our entire dust collection system. We just finished it, and I know there are gonna be lots of people that have their own opinion about dust collection, but let me tell you, when you set up dust collection on a 3,000 square foot space, there's lots of things you're gonna do to just make it work. But I think that based on my previous shop and the dust collection I did there, that I really learned a lot about what really works. And I've applied all those things I've learned to this system. So I'm gonna walk you through each part of the dust collection system, why we did what we did, how we did it. And we're gonna talk about uh, sort of the do's and don'ts about dust collection. Rich from Fresh Off The Saw on Instagram was nice enough to come up and help. Really, bud, thank you so much. Make sure you go over and subscribe to his Instagram. Let me just answer the question right now for the, the comment trolls. Uh, I did not ground this system. I am not going to. It is impossible to blow up a dust collector and I'm gonna prove it to you. Mark my words here. We're gonna try and blow up a dust collector. I have an extra one right now and we are going to try and blow it up. So that's coming up soon. Our system starts here at the machine with an eight inch to six inch reducer. This was the most expensive part in this entire system. I think it was 63 bucks, which was heartbreaking. When you come out of your dust collector, you want as long and straight of a run as possible. Now it was impossible for us to come straight out of the dust collector, but we do a soft 45. You want no hard 90s in a dust collection because that really limits airflow. Uh, air likes to go soft around corners. So we come out of the reducer with a 45 here and go up to the ceiling. Now we are really lucky in this building. Not only do we have a lot of steel beams that go across here, but the previous tenants had a huge air compressor and they ran a one inch thick tubing for the airline. So we had lots of places to put tie wire, which actually really sped things up. It made it a lot easier to find steel to tie to. So we come up here and we go into our first Y. And You'll see that I taped every single connection. One of the things I learned from my previous dust collection system that permanently bonding pipes together means you'll never be able to use them anywhere else. Uh, you know, I had an entire four inch system in my previous shop that pretty much was just garbage. We were able to salvage a couple longer runs out of it, but I was really bummed that I did that. So everything is taped here. I'm not gonna change that. It's gonna stay taped. It's not the prettiest, but we used very high quality duct tape. I recommend the 3M brand. It's very, very sticky. And we used six inch thin wall PVC here. Uh, it has an outside diameter of 6.25 inches and is the cheapest option for that I was able to find in dust collection uh, for six inch. So we come off here in a Y and then again, no hard 90, we go into a 45 here. Those go down to the sanders and this continues on to the rest of the system. So for the sanding area, I, I had a thought, which was I could run a line with four different blast gates for all of these machines, but I realized that reaching over and trying to change a blast gate is gonna be a lot slower than just putting a quick disconnect on one really long hose. Because this is the closest area to the dust collector, there's gonna be no issue with power. I mean, this thing really, really sucks hard. Um, so I have this quick disconnect with a long hose that goes to my drum sander and then can easily stretch out to the rest of the sanders. Now, in every portion of the system, I and I'm sure you saw the blast gate video I released on Thursday, but if not, I'll link it right here. For every part where the six inch goes down to four inch, I added a six inch blast gate because I wanted to be able to shut off a whole portion of the system without having to go through and reach over tools and turn off a blast gate, especially if I'm going back and forth, like, you know, if I'm cutting templates over on the bandsaw and then sanding them on the drum sander, I just want to be able to easily, without having to bend over behind tools, be able to change the blast gate. Now, one of the uh, things that we still need to solve is how to attach these to the wall. Uh, we spent a week putting this system together and we weren't quite sure if everything was exactly where we wanted it. And so we, we decided to hold off on attaching them to the walls. But uh, one of the cool things I did, which is amazing, is green and red paracord to each blast gate. So from anywhere in the shop, you can just quickly glance up and see if anything's open that you don't want it to be. So when green's against the thing, it's open. 
and when red's against the blast gate, it is closed, and it's so easy to see. It's really a good idea, and if you get the opportunity to do this, if you build blast gates, which there are plans available on my website for both the six and four inch, I would recommend doing this. It really makes a big difference. So then the dust collection cuts across the shop, and right here we split off the dust collection so that uh, half goes over to the drill presses and the rest continues on to the center column in the shop. Uh, let's head over to the drill presses. I'll show you how those work. And same thought process here, just one hose for both drill presses. It's just a quick disconnect. These things are awesome, guys. If you have tools that you switch a lot, get these. It makes the biggest difference. You can just pop it right on just like that. It's so easy. This is the dust collection for my drill press. It's got three forms of dust collection. I love this thing. I'm going to do a video on how to build one of these. So here is sort of the heart of the, the system. And this is kind of my Frankenstein. It's pretty cool what we did here. Again, we've got the paracord on the blast gate so you can tell if it's open or closed. This then wise off to the 13 inch DeWalt planer. It then goes off to the table saw and the router table. We did some really cool stuff over there that I'm going to show you. It then goes down to the jointer. I ordered some thinner paracord for the four inch blast gates and I'm going to add that. And then I did something I've always wanted to do, which was a floor sweep. Now this is really cool. Check this out. So what's great about the floor sweep here is one, it holds up this whole column and gives it a ton of support. I designed this in Fusion 360. It took like three minutes and it's just essentially a 4.25 inch hole for the pipe and then just a small two inch tall box. And then I caulked it to the floor when we were all done so I knew it wouldn't move. And that essentially seals it in place seals all the edges so it has more suction and gives it a lot of support for the whole system. Now, again, here you see one of our temporary supports. I'm going to attach that to the floor and maybe do something a little bit more permanent. But here we have our table saw and router table setup. Table saw, I really wanted a way to be able to turn it off and on really easily. So that's just right here. I can open and close that. And then the router table is really cool. It has a two and a half inch pipe that goes down to the bottom of the router and fits in the dust collection port there. And then I created this. This was, I think, for a lathe, this dust collection, but it's basically a wand that you can point right at your router bit, just clamps to the side of your router table. And I can turn that on and off individually with the bottom piece as well. So if I'm not using this, I don't have to turn it on. I couldn't fit the wooden blast gates here, but you know, I'm not completely heartbroken. It just these are easy to use for this application. They're not the best as we talked about in the blast gate video, but they're going to do the trick for now. So next our dust collection goes to the 24 inch planer I bought at an auction for 800 bucks. I'm going to link that right here, but this is where you can really see how great it is to start with six inch pipe because your dust collector loses nothing. And this planer puts out so many chips and to show you how strong this system is I'm going to take a quarter inch pass on this board which is unheard of on a planer but this 24 inch planer can do it I think this is the first time it's ever been in a video and it is so cool the spiral cutter head just rips through boards um, so you'll see that this system when you run six inch it just really really sucks really hard um, so let me let me run this through we'll take a quarter inch pass I'll show you here so I'm going to raise that up to one inch here flip the blast gate So that's incredible. It took a quarter inch worth of chips there and not a single piece anywhere in my shop. So let's turn this guy off and head over to the next section of dust collection. So here we have the last section of our dust collection, which is the CNC and the bandsaw. Again, another six inch blast gate. Uh, here I put a little temporary brace on the wall here. This section kind of gets really heavy. So uh, I had to put some temporary bracing. We're working on finding some solutions for the whole system, but it works great. The blast gate for the CNC. I have a four inch blast gate and it comes off in a soft hose to a Y and goes to both ducts collection ports on the bandsaw. And that's where the system ends on this side. So when it comes to dust collection, I think there's a few things that I learned from my previous shop that I think really make a difference. When I did my last dust collection system, and it was a video I did about a year ago, I really thought that some of those rules about hard 90s and things were loose rules that they really didn't make a big difference. But when you do hard turns, it really makes a massive difference in airflow. And that was that couldn't have been shown more than when I took my dust collection system down. All the hard 90s where there was a blast gate right next to it were just full of chips. And you could just tell that the system wasn't working to its fullest potential. And so 
another thing is try and go from the biggest pipes you can and then start getting smaller down at your tools. It really, if you choke off the airflow immediately out of your dust collector, you're really limiting the power that is available to you. No hard 90s, even when you get to the tools. So I've got Ys for every tool. Those are 45 degrees. Uh, there's not a 90 degree fitting in this entire system. Uh, blast gates, metal blast gates suck and not in the good way that these videos have sucked, but I created some blast gates that I think really are game changers. You can find those plans over at my website. They eliminate the gap that is caused by metal blast gates when they are open. Uh, they are easy to change and see uh, whether they're open or closed and they're really cool and they're way, way cheaper. I think, you know, even with really nice maple plywood, these blast gates cost me four bucks each to make, whereas metal blast gates for four inch are 12 or $13 and the six inch are like 20 bucks. So uh, these were a big, big savings. Also put in a floor sweep. That is the coolest. I really, really like that. And it was worth taking the time to do that. I'm probably gonna add a place for a hose that I can walk around the shop and sort of vacuum with. And then the, the wand to the router table is awesome because router tables stereotypically have really bad dust collection. And when you can get it from the top and the bottom, that really, really helps. I've already ran a few things through there and it makes a big, big difference. So guys, thanks for watching. We're gonna do a follow-up to this where we do some dust collection testing and possibly try and blow up a dust collector like I was talking about earlier. So put your questions down in the comments and let me know what you guys wanna know about dust collection. We'll do a follow-up video. Um, thanks for watching, guys. If you're new here, please subscribe, like, comment, share, all that other good stuff. Thanks for watching. Stay safe in the shop and have a wonderful day.